Good morning, everyone. My name is Susan Edgman Levitan, and I'm the executive director of the John D. Stokel Center for Primary Care Innovation at Mass General Hospital. And I'm also the moderator for the Geriatric Medicine Town Hall Program. We are thrilled to expand our town hall format to help create a community for people living with HIV age 50 and older to learn and teach. Beginning in April of 2020, the Geriatric Medicine Program began to offer monthly town halls. These one hour virtual program um, educational sessions were designed for patients and families. The goals of this program were to provide practical and accurate information about staying healthy and functional during the coronavirus pandemic to convey information about how to stay in touch with the geriatric medicine practice and to create a virtual community and lifeline to decrease isolation. For the first year of our program, the content focused on sharing the latest information about COVID. Over time, the content shifted more towards a geriatrics curriculum guided by participant suggestions and requests. We've conducted 32 geriatric medicine town halls with content including COVID topics, advanced care planning, advances in aging, sexual health, eye health, hearing, exercise, the use of supplements and managing isolation, and there were many others. It is my pleasure to introduce the co-directors of the Massachusetts General Hospital Age Positively Program, a clinical partnership between the Division of Geriatric Medicine and Infectious Disease at MGH. Dr. Virginia Triant is an NIH-funded clinical investigator and infectious disease clinician focused on HIV and aging, who has been practicing in the MGH HIV clinic for over 15 years. Dr. Matt Russell is the clinical director of geriatric medicine at, at MGH and founder of the Geriatric Town Hall Program. So, Dr. Triant, please tell us about HIV and aging and ways in which the town hall program could be helpful. Well, thank you for the introduction. Um, with the advent of combination antiretroviral therapy, people living with HIV have been able to live longer lives. However, HIV has been associated with higher rates and earlier onset of chronic conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, emphysema, and some cancers. We've also found that people living with HIV can experience geriatric conditions such as cognitive impairment, falls, frailty, osteoporosis, and polypharmacy at earlier ages. Mm. Patients and healthcare providers may not always be aware that they're at risk or need to screen for these conditions. The town hall is a great format to reach people living with HIV and provide really much needed information. Um, and we aren't aware of a similar program in the region. Better addressing the issues of HIV and aging is critical, we think, to enhance the care and well being for people living with HIV as they age. Thank you. Dr. Russell, given your experience with the geriatric medicine town halls, can you share how this approach can help people with HIV in our metropolitan area? In addition to providing up-to-date and expert-informed recommendations around optimal medical care, this program is really a great way to recruit and engage people with HIV age 50 and over. While connecting people to care is always wonderful, we've found that the town hall program has created a community of bi-directional learning. With each town hall, we receive feedback and suggestions from our attendees, and this informs our ongoing content. We've also found that the program has been easy to sustain and scale over time. To respond to the needs of the participants in the town hall program, we form collaborations with many organizations to showcase their programs and resources. Um, Dr. Russell, can you tell us how these experiences might enhance the age positively town halls? Sure. In our, in our prior town halls, um, you know, we've collaborated with other health systems, uh, government organizations, and community agencies. Our attendees have hail not only from our geriatrics clinic, 
but also from these other groups. And many attendees who still come to our town halls work for these organizations and can help recruit attendees as well. In the Boston and New England area, we are fortunate to have a rich network of organizations with whom we can collaborate in programming. And we can ensure we are reaching groups who are underrepresented to ensure equitable access. So Dr. Tryon, um, what are other ways this program could help people with HIV age 50 and over? Well, you know, sometimes it's what we don't know that's actually most important to our attendees um, and what, what collaborators in the geriatric town halls have found. Having a rigorous feedback mechanism for our, our attendees has been one of the most powerful ways of informing future topics. Um, what we might think of as most important to share may not always reflect the challenges and real concerns of people living with and aging with HIV. That's why in our first town hall through the Age Positively program, we plan to provide a background on what it is that we hope to achieve and recruit attendees for a deeper dive focus group to make sure we address the topics they're most interested in hearing about. Thank you. So what topics have been suggested by patients you've seen in the Age Positively Clinic? Uh, as, as a geriatrician for over 20 years, I have learned to make sure that patients are able to speak to what matters to themselves first, uh, rather than have me define that for them. While geriatrics patients are often quite medically complex, the aging HIV population can present with medical complexity as well as experiences of trauma, stigma, and resilience. My patients have shared stories about navigating life challenges and their ongoing concerns about facing this stage of life and maintaining their independence and individuality. I think one of the most important topics to explore in our town hall uh, is, is how to ensure that the patient's voice is heard. In geriatrics, we have the concept <clears throat> of talking about patient identified hopes and goals. I see this as quite compatible with our prospective audience's interests. Many patients are seeing a host of specialists and undergoing frequent tests and being hospitalized. Where am I in all of this is not an uncommon thought. Some other potential topics that have come up include falls prevention, uh, medication management and polypharmacy, and optimizing nutrition. Learning from my patients has really been such a privilege. Dr. Tryant, what have you learned? Thank you. Um, you know, many HIV providers are aware of the accelerated and accentuated onset of chronic conditions but screening for and managing geriatric syndromes might be a bit of a challenge since care often requires a multidisciplinary and time intensive approach. And earlier in the HIV treatment era, many providers were not routinely caring for older individuals and so have not had the experience of managing geriatric syndromes. Uh, having our HIV and aging program, the Age Positively program, is a great way for our patients to receive a comprehensive geriatrics assessment um, and partner with our interdisciplinary team members as well. We think the town hall program will extend, will expand on this and create a great community for bi-directional learning. Thank you. The HIV and aging challenge for people with HIV in urban communities has a focus on racial and ethnic minorities, as well as the LGBTQ plus population. How will our HIV and aging town halls reach these communities in the greater Boston area? Dr. Tryant? Well, here at MGH, our HIV clinic mirrors the demographics of the communities that we hope to reach. Um, MGH has also been awarded an NIH Precision in Medicine grant, which requires recruitment of underrepresented minorities, and this will inform our work as well. Dr. Russell. So we've learned from our geriatric medicine town halls how fast a community of committed and mission-driven organizations can work together to share information that is beneficial to our patients and their families. We have co-hosted town halls with government and community organizations, as well as health centers and educational organizations. Boston is blessed with a host of organizations who work with people with HIV and also organizations who work for older adults. B 
being able to bring these organizations and people together will help us to identify the gaps that our audience members experience, and we can work on strategies to fill in those gaps. We love this work, and we are very excited to share this approach with other communities that will benefit. Thank you. We are very excited to expand this work to other communities um, because I know we will all learn a lot. So thank you for this opportunity.